Through the years, Disney has built some truly great resorts, and despite my past, what I see as valid criticism of the company, I really do like many of them. One that particularly stands out, though, is Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge a resort that first opened back in 2001. But despite how unique and well-themed it is, it's also often, at face value, very expensive. So let's check in for one night in their most notable room category and find out if it's worth the money. This resort began all the way back in around 1997, as Disney had slated a plot of land west of the future theme park, Animal Kingdom, as a hotel parcel. Disney hired the Urban Design Group as the primary architectural firm, with Peter Dominic leading the project. Dominic was really an expert in African architecture, which he had a personal passion for. So his team, along with Walt Disney Imagineering, led by Wing Chow, began working on Disney's Safari Lodge. The original concept for this resort would feature a grand lobby complete with a cigar lounge and various water features. The guest lodging buildings would fan out with wooden, boxy facades that had steeped roofs on the top level. Perhaps the most interesting proposal in this early concept are the safari suites, what appear to be smaller villas that are placed along a loop trail. Ultimately, this concept evolved into Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, settling for the final concept that ultimately got built. Though much of that original 1997 design would stay the same, including the shape of the structure and general arrangements. The resort would begin construction and open three years after the Animal Kingdom theme park in April of 2001. Since, it has largely remained the exact same, apart from a few room renovations. This is the latest, and is also our room. It's a Savannah View king bed, which we got on the second level, which is the lowest floor you can get with this category. So upon first impressions, we were pleasantly surprised by the look of this room. Disney has been callously refurbishing their resort hotel accommodations to remove the proverbial character and replace it with literal characters. But I'm glad to see that Animal Kingdom Lodge has been largely spared by these renovations, and this room is actually pretty nice. It carries on the theming across the entire resort, especially the wooden furniture, most of which are custom made for this resort, some even hand carved from Africa. You do get a nice cushy sofa with a side table, as well as a small desk area with two chairs. Down the hall, you also get a closet that contains a mini fridge and a Keurig coffee bar. But it's the smaller details that I really love, from the themed mirror to the clay carvings and straw bowls. I really love all the aspects that tie this room together. Now, before the renovations, each room had bug netting that you'd find in actual African lodges. They were strung up as the headboard. It's kind of sad that they're gone now, but what's replacing them is pretty nice, as they're wooden headboards that have warm, recessed lighting behind it. It looks great, along with really all the lights in here. They can also all be controlled with these buttons above each bedside table. Speaking of which, the bed itself is very comfortable, with nice linen to go along with it. It's basically the same across all Disney hotels, and they're nothing special, but they are nice. The bathroom is equally a nice place, an aspect of the room I actually very much understand why a renovation was needed. The shower area is a little plain for a room at this price point, but it's passable, and I really like the mirror as well as the wooden and granite vanity. But the real standout for this room is not even what's inside of it, it's what's past the windows, the sunset savannah. This is unbelievably cool. You have a hotel room that looks onto a vast savanna filled with over 30 species of African mammals, all in central Florida. It's truly one of a kind in North America, and you can spend hours out on your balcony enjoying a cup of coffee and just taking in the ever-changing views. In the evenings, once the sun goes down, very small lights fixed on the roofs of the buildings project soft, cool light onto the savanna. So even when it's dark, you can still observe all the animals. I even did that for my bed, which falling asleep while staring at zebras was something genuinely special. And of course the amount of times you're actually going to see animals are never consistent. But our room was right next to a watering hole, and the savanna has been designed in such a way that feeding placements will convince the animals to graze around the guest room. While this is all really great, there are some things, however, that I don't like about this room. 
Despite the lighting doing everything it can to make the space feel cozy, the engineered wood floors just counteract it. I really wish they kept the carpet in this room, as a hard floor just makes it feel a lot more cold and not as comfortable of a space. The balcony too is just not as comfortable as it should be, with metal chairs that obviously don't give you any cushioning. That's especially disappointing for how much time you'll want to spend out on the space. They have some nice balcony chairs for some of the suites, and I just wish they would use it for these rooms, especially given the price point. I want to take a quick moment and thank this video sponsor, Symphony of the Sojourn. I talked about this novel in my Bankrupt episode on Borders, and since I made it, I've gotten further into this fantastical story, inspired by Dungeons & Dragons. It's a fantasy novel written by Rowan Alexandria Bennett, and she's created a world filled with political intrigue, magic, pirates, and an overall rich atmosphere. I've been really liking it so far, and I found it to be a very versatile read, something you could cozy up with at home, but also a story to dive into while traveling. I'll be bringing it with me on my trip to Italy later this month. A very appropriate place to read it, in fact. I love how there's a grander story being told through the unique perspectives of different characters, all with their own arc. So if you want to immerse yourself in a fun new world, I really do recommend picking this up, and you can do so right now by clicking the link in the description below. It will bring you to the Amazon page for the book, where you can pick it up in paperback, hardcover, or on Kindle. Okay, so Animal Kingdom Lodge is a pretty massive resort. Excluding the DVC building, the whole property is on about 66 acres of land, with the hotel itself containing over 1,200 rooms. So there's a lot to see and do. Really, from the moment you drive on property, you enter a completely different continent. From the tall grass that gives you glimpses of the main structure, like an animal in the brush on a safari, or the small faux campfires that lead you in, the landscaping already sets the scene. Thankfully, Disney has removed the parking fees for guests, and after walking under the impressive Port Cochere, you enter something truly special. Following the Frank Lloyd Wright technique of compression and release, you enter through a tight space that is released into this absolutely spectacular grand lobby. Combined with the warm signature scent associated with this resort, the whole atmosphere here is fantastic, and the design is genuinely perfect. I really can't imagine how this could have been done any better. Everywhere you look, you see details that bring together the aesthetics of an authentic African lodge, made with native materials like wood, mud, and straw. Structural support beams are made to look like massive trunks of wood, fastened together with rope. Four chandeliers are diffused with Kenyan shields from the Masai people, while the floors are rich wood that have golden emblems embedded into them. Four torches help illuminate the rather intimate and comfortable seating areas below, most of them completely custom made by craftsmen in Africa and imported to this hotel. Above is a suspension bridge that crosses over top a large 16-foot authentic mask from Nigeria, which is beautifully crafted from various vibrant fabrics. In fact, this whole lobby, and resort even, is adorned with authentic African art all over the place. The lobby alone has various display cases with incredible pieces, some even embedded into the tables. Even in the most random, quiet parts of the resort, you'll find real, historic pieces of art. At the gift shop, you'll find hand-carved animals that are for sale front and center. That's along with a few other authentic pieces you can buy, including wine from South Africa. There's even an artisan out front that is carving those wooden animals live. Really, even when you walk to your room, there are pieces of art in these two-story mini-lobbies where the building's lodging structures join. Each lobby has a different theme and subsequently has different artifacts. This is also complemented by outdoor patios with chairs, some even with binoculars. All of this is something I find so funny when compared to how Disney promotes Riviera with their authentic custom art. Meanwhile, Animal Kingdom Lodge has probably hundreds of authentic African artifacts and a treasure trove of pieces everywhere. Anyways, back to the lobby, and to the left of that mask, you have the Overlook area. Originally intended to be a cigar lounge in the 97 concept, it's now a lovely and quiet sitting area where you can relax, lounge, and take in some more artifacts and views of the animals from the balcony. Directly across from it is Ugun's Fire Pit, a rather intimate and comfortable area to sit and warm up. As you look up, you'll notice Leaping Antelope, which guides your eyes towards the massive glass windows on the other side. It spans almost the entire height of the building and is broken up by wrought iron vines. Just beyond it is the Savannah, and a rather large outdoor pathway that allows public viewing of the animals, along with a large fire pit. 
Institute. Both here and inside the lobby, you'll find animal experts and cultural representatives that always are incredibly nice and enthusiastic to educate and answer any questions. Back inside, and just below a small bridge on the lobby level, you'll see what's supposed to be water bubbling up and cascading down a small indoor waterfall. The water pools besides a bar called Victoria Falls, a detailed space that has some great appetizers and drinks. From there, the water cascades down some more rocks and flows down a river leading outside. It passes under two restaurants, Boma and Jiko. Boma is a buffet-style restaurant themed to a market. I've eaten here a few times, including this trip, and it was fantastic. The many soups are always great, so are the cuts of meat, and of course the zebra dome desserts. But it's not cheap, at $54 a person plus tax. Likewise is Jiko, a fine dining restaurant which we did not get a chance to eat at, but has great reviews and a delicious looking menu. Though again, with high prices to go along with it. Just outside of Jiko's floor-to-ceiling windows is a flowing waterfall that meets up with the same stream that was coming from the lobby. It flows down and is made to look like it leads into the pool. Now, the Uzima pool is very large and is made to look like the pooling area for the aforementioned river. In fact, when the resort first opened, it was lined with green tile that gave it the appearance of a more natural-looking watering hole. Though apparently it was perceived by parents that it just looked dirty and Disney was forced to change it rather quickly. Regardless, this lush pool area features a bar, a gym that also includes a dry sauna and a steam room, while just outside of it there's one of two hot tubs and a kid's play area. On the other side is the Mara, the resort's quick service where you can find some really good food, like this fire-roasted tomato and herb ricotta flatbread, which was $12.79. Or for breakfast, this Mickey waffle platter, which was $10.79. But animals are also not omitted from this area, as just beyond the arcade in the second hot tub is another overlook area, which also includes a pond with flamingos. This is actually where that thematic stream from the lobby ends. This is again a really nice public access area where you can see the animals. They used to have night vision binoculars out here in the evenings, but I guess that's no longer the case. This is all within the main resort, which is called the Jumbo House. Right across from it though is the DVC building, Disney's timeshare division called Kidani Village. That was built in 2008 and features its own cozy vibe with a scaled down version of Jumbo House's lobby. Though it too is a massive structure that also has its own set of amenities, like a family pool, tennis courts, a full observation platform, more lounges, and even a restaurant called Sanam. It specifically is very well liked, especially for its African and Indian style bread service, though again, very expensive. That property also has a bunch of activities in conjunction with all of the complimentary activities here, but there are some upcharge ones too. You can even take a nighttime safari around the savanna. It looks pretty cool, and I guess is pretty reasonable at around $75 per person. Plus, you do not need to be staying here to go on it. If you want to go between both of these lobbies, it is pretty easy, as you can either walk or take the internal bus service. So yeah, all of this is fantastic. It's dynamic, it's fluid, literally, and it's lush. Peter Dominic's Disney hotels have always had a sense of dynamic verticality, and that's definitely prevalent here, and it's why I love the Victoria Falls area so much. There's just so much going on with the architecture. And there's so many little things to discover. Like there, you'll notice this random hallway. That's actually a guest walkway that connects to other rooms and the lobby, and by extension the outdoor observation path. It's all so connective, and this property just has so many small nooks and secret areas to discover. It's so intimate, yet so grand. I forgot to even mention that there's these two wonderful lookout points just outside of the lobby. I think it's nearly a perfect design for a hotel. But not totally perfect, as there are some drawbacks. And for me, those are in the room categories and views. Because Animal Kingdom Lodge is designed in a semi-circular form with long lodging wings, there are some rooms with very bad views. Now, I understand that it had to be this way to make this concept work, but that also means that people staying in the rooms towards the end of these buildings have a comically long walk all the way back to the lobby. Likewise is the entire resort from anything else, as a bus ride to all the other parks except Animal Kingdom is going to be very long. Well, at least longer than other Disney hotels. But what I think is the worst part about this hotel are the very unfortunate room views for the lowest category, resort view. Those can range anywhere from parking lot views to you being embedded into the rooftop. Believe it or not, even these openings right next to the pathway to the bus station are enclosed balconies for this category. 
But you could also get very lucky and get an obstructed view of the pool, or even get an obstructed view of the savannah. It's a vast hit or miss with this category, so I would highly suggest making a room request beforehand when you pick this cheapest category. There's actually a very handy tool called the Room Finder on touringplans.com. You can select any room within a Disney hotel and get an idea of what the view is going to be like. They also have actual pool view rooms as well as savannah view rooms. The latter is what we got. Though again, not all savannah rooms are also perfect, nor are even the categories above it, the suites, which this hotel offers in one and two bedroom variants. Honestly, I don't think they're anything special. They're basically a standard room with an okay bathroom and a living room glued onto it. It's definitely not a luxurious upgrade. Though, this hotel does offer a club level called the Kilimanjaro Club, with rooms that have preferred views and are close to the lobby. There's also two specialty suites, both on the fifth floor, standing right outside the lobby. They're the Royal Cuba Presidential Suite and the Royal Asante Presidential Suite. Despite receiving recent updates, both are still unbelievably beautiful and have been my dream to stay in. But I'm not entirely sure if that's ever going to happen. So let's talk price. The lowest category here, a standard view room, starts at around $469. But I found it as low as $340 a night with a discount before tax. A two queen pool view starts at around $506 rack rate, but I found them as low as $350 on Disney's website. Now our one king bed savannah room was $480. Though with tax, it came out to be $540 for the night. Rack rates for those can start at around $672, but obviously we got it on a discount. In fact, if you do your research beforehand, you can find some really good deals like this Savannah room on Priceline for $396 all in with tax. Now above this are the club level rooms, and they can start at $775 a night, which honestly isn't too bad, though they will climb well past $1139 for a one bedroom suite, or $1900 for a two bedroom suite, both of which are definitely bad values. Probably the same can be argued for the presidential suites, which come in at around $3500 a night. But they have to be specialty booked on the phone, and yeah, they're designed for VIPs, not regular vacation bookings. However, apart from third-party booking sites offering deals, there is one other way to save at this resort. Remember, there's a whole DVC area both at Kadani Village and the entire fifth floor of Jumbo House. So when people rent out their DVC points, people can buy them through third-party broker sites. It's absolutely not a perfect system and will require sacrifice and a variable schedule, but you can get a DVC room here, which is honestly kind of better than a normal room, for just $189 a night. If you can jump through all of the hoops, that's a great deal. Alright, so let's break all of this down and see where it lands with an actual rated score. I call my scoring system Jake's Is It Any Good Score, and it's out of 5 categories, each out of 10, for a potential perfect score of 50 out of 50. We'll start with the location, and Animal Kingdom Lodge is the furthest Disney hotel from all of the other parks, and that's often a demerit for many people. Personally, I don't mind it, and I kind of like how secluded and quiet it feels on the far end of the property, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Amenities here are plentiful, from three high-quality restaurants, a quick service, various bars and lounges, the theming, the art, the animals, and so much more. I literally couldn't ask for anything else, so it is a perfect 10 out of 10. Luxury and quality is also really great, with real handmade materials that make up many public spaces. There's authentic art, beautiful architecture, and outfacing public spaces that provide special moments to see animals. It's all really great, especially when considering the cost of the lower end rooms. However, while those rooms are good, they're not great, and they don't feel overly luxurious for the price point. So I think it's a fair 9 out of 10. Service was also great. While the core staff were friendly, those who really stood out were the cultural representatives and animal experts, who were all fantastic. It's another 9 out of 10. Value is a little harder to decide upon. Obviously, for $189, it's an unbelievably great value. Though, if you want a guaranteed Savannah room, we paid a more average rate of $540, and while my biggest issue was a lack of carpet, I don't think it's hard at all to completely justify it on how insane it is to have a room that overlooks these animals. With all of that considered, I think it's a very good 8 out of 10. 
That brings the total score to 42 out of 50, a pretty great score that only rivals Cabana Bay down the highway due to its great value proposition. But when you compare this to other luxury hotels, or even other Disney hotels, it blows them all out of the water. And I think Animal Kingdom Lodge deserves it. This is a unique, creative, and gorgeous hotel that is truly one of a kind. It has clear inspiration, but it thoughtfully adapts it into its own thing. Clearly a lot of creative minds from the architects, imagineers, consultants, artists, landscapers, all of them have poured so much thought and care into how this would come together. And I think the final result speaks for itself. I mean, it's absolutely timeless. It's one of the only Disney resorts that haven't seen major renovations, and it doesn't need it. It largely looks the same as it did in 2001, and it holds up damn near perfectly. So if you're planning a Disney vacation and have the money, stay here. I think even with some minor dislikes with our room, I am not exaggerating when I say this is one of the greatest hotels ever built in North America. This was a much more positive look within Walt Disney World, and I am curious on what you think of this resort. Thanks again to Symphony of the Sojourn for sponsoring this video, and you can find a link to buy it right now in the description below. I'll catch you all in the comments, but until then, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.